In the dark shadows of history lie legends of lost civilizations whose kings ruled with the power of gods, only to crumble into the dust of time. Mirror framed in gold. In your depths, a story holds of a rock star who became a monster. Of breaking news here at Southern Crown Court, I can tell you that Gary Glitter has been found guilty of a string of historical child sex charges dating all the way back to 1975. He is sitting in the dock inside court one i'm told he has been shaking his head from side to side and muttering to himself these charges relate to a time period 1975 to 1980 glitter is being prosecuted under his real name of paul francis Gad. Today we're going to find out why we really have to stop using Rock and Roll Part 2 during NFL games. I don't care how many times it says hey and how nice the drums are, there's separating art from the artist and then there's making a deal with the devil. Today we dive into the life of Gary Glitter, the rock star who became a monster. Born Paul Francis Gad, Glitter started performing as a teen in the London club scene, doing ballads and rock and roll standards under his then stage name Paul Raven. He was soon discovered by film producer Robert Hertford Davis, who would finance his first recording session with Decca Records. Following this, Gad released his first single as Paul Raven entitled Alone in the Night. Gad secured management and signed with Parlophone Records, working with producer George Martin well before his pivotal work with the Beatles. Martin produced a pair of singles with Gad but neither charted well and Gad's momentum stalled. Gad would also audition for a number of television and advertising roles, making a vital connection with producer and arranger Mike Leander. Leander would help Gad with the second leg of his career, bringing him on as a vocalist for his show band. Still under the Paul Raven moniker, Gad was pushed to work with Leander's group The Poets to record demo tracks. Leander's show band disbanded and Gad floated between some other projects briefly performing as Paul Monday and contributing to the popular concept album Jesus Christ Superstar in 1970. In 1971, glam rock took the UK by storm. Gad quickly adopted the mannerisms, fashion, and larger-than-life persona needed to thrive in this new, bombast landscape. Gad would play with a number of alliterative names, working from Zed backwards until he landed on one that fit. He would become Gary Glitter. Gad, now Glitter, would release a 15-minute jam session on A and B sides entitled Rock and Roll Part 1 and 2, respectively. Part 2 would become the hit of the two, with its infectious chants, its booming stadium sound, and earth-shattering drums. Although it took some time, Rock and Roll Part 2 hit number 2 on the UK charts and the top 10 in the United States, a rarity for a UK glam rock song. Rock and Roll Part 1 was a modest hit in its own right, charting in the UK and going number 1 in France. Glitter's mainstream appeal put him in competition with other UK heavy hitters like Slade and T-Rex, but backed by his band The Glitterman and adorned in a new reflective outfit and platform boots each night, Glitter quickly became a household name. He would continue to have mainstream hits with I'm the Leader of the Gang and I Love You Love Me Love reaching the charts. Glitter would have 11 consecutive top 10s with Rock and Roll Part 2 becoming a popular sports anthem in the United States overnight. Despite that, Glitter's major popularity would remain in the UK for the most part, but it was clear that Gary Glitter was a major artist and commanded influence. Glitter's sales would decline, leading him to take a two-year hiatus. Glitter was also plagued by financial troubles, declaring bankruptcy in 1977. Glitter cited tax rates in the UK as the culprit, but in the 90s it would be revealed during a subsequent bankruptcy claim that he had unpaid back taxes spanning decades. But we aren't there yet, are we? Despite still charting with two top 40 singles following his return to music, Glitter was under significant financial pressure. 
However, the emerging post-punk scene and audience helped bolster a resurgence for Glitter, as much of his influence was present in the next wave of emerging artists in subgenres like Britpop, New Wave, and Glam Metal. Glitter would emphasize touring All That Glitters in 1981. Within three years, Glitter had performed 80 shows a year, playing colleges and clubs as well as charting with hits like Dance Me Up and Another Rock and Roll Christmas. Glitter's comeback was aided by guest spots and collaborations. Glitter would also remix and master Rock and Roll Part 2 and I'm the Leader of the Gang, with the aid of producer and UK band Trevor Horn and Girl School respectively. Much of Glitter's back catalog would have another life injected into it by a Jive Bunny and the Mix Masters sampling another Rock and Roll Christmas in 1989. Following this positive return to music, Glitter would get more involved in business, starting a restaurant and a record label called Attitude Records. In 1997, Glitter was slated to have a major cameo in Spice World, the then explosively popular girl group the Spice Girls as a feature-length film, a major coup for the glam rocker. The leader star was burning bright, but soon his fairy tale would turn to a cautionary fable. Glitter had taken a laptop of his to a tech world in Bristol, England for routine repairs. A technician discovered pornographic images on the hard drive and reported Glitter to the authorities. Following Glitter's arrest, his homes in London and Somerset were searched by the police where they discovered further illegal images. Glitter was chastised severely by the media once the details around the allegations came to light. He looked every inch the pop star as he emerged from his blacked out Mercedes, but the performance which followed had none of the glitter which gave him his name. He was nervous and looked drawn as he posed for the cameras at an extraordinary meeting with the media arranged at a crossroads in London's Regent's Park. The police, after a series of anonymous death threats, were taking no chances and sealed off the area as the former rock star told the world he was sorry for what he'd done. I deeply regret doing what I was sent to prison for. I've served my time. I want to put it all behind me. And live my life. On November 12th, 1999, Glitter was sentenced to four months in prison. Additionally, Glitter would be placed on the sex offender registry in the UK, following admissions of downloading over 4,000 images of CP. He would be cleared of past charges of having a sexual relationship with a 14-year-old in the 1970s. Glitter became publicly despised in the UK following this media circus and his conviction. In the wake of these events, Glitter fled to Spain via his yacht. He told locals that his name was Larry Brilliante, spending his time frequenting local bars and internet cafes. Eventually, his true identity was revealed in Soto Grande, and he moved to Cuba and later Cambodia. Renting an apartment in Phnom Penh in late 2002, Cambodian authorities detained him over previous sexual offenses for four days, eventually being released on bail. Glitter would then be deported to Bangkok and would subsequently settle in Vietnam. Glitter rented a luxury villa in Bung Tau, Vietnam and would apply for permanent residency. Glitter would fall under the eye of authorities after being banned from a nightclub for allegedly groping a teenage waitress. Eyewitness accounts state that Glitter took two teenage girls into his seaside home. On November 12, 2005, Glitter fled his home prior to the authorities coming and questioning a 15-year-old girl he was living with. Police began searching for Glitter, and he would eventually be apprehended on November 20th, 2005, at Tan Son Nol International Airport in Ho Chi Minh. He would attempt to board a flight to Bangkok. Six women aged 11 to 23 claimed to the authorities that Glitter had had sex with them. Following Glitter's arrest, he was turned over to the provincial police of Barang Vung Tau and returned to Vung Tau on the suspicion of having sex with two underage girls. Glitter was held in jail throughout the investigation. Glitter's first great charge was dropped due to insufficient evidence, a charge that could have potentially led to Glitter's execution by firing squad if convicted. God, if only. Glitter was required to pay compensation to the other women who, upon receipt of payment, eventually appealed for his clemency. On March 2nd, 2006, Glitter was tried on charges of committing obscene acts with two girls, aged 10 and 11, facing up to 14 years in prison if convicted. The following day, he was found guilty and sentenced to three years in prison. The sentence included mandatory deportation at the end of his sentence and payment of 5 million Vietnamese dong which is roughly 305 USD, which is not a lot of money for this 
horrible thing he did to his victims. Less than a PS3, holy fuck. He sexually abused and committed obscene acts with children many times in a disgusting and sick manner. Litter would continue to deny any wrongdoing, instead alleging that tabloids and British media had attempted to frame him. Litter was interviewed by the BBC in May 2006, denying that he was a pedophile, claiming to not have knowingly had sexual relations with any women under 18 years of age. You don't need a fucking microscope to figure out an 11 year old's an 11 year old Gary. Litter stated that he intended to return to music following his release from prison and to put his life back on track. I'm sure there were plenty of fans really excited to hear the new deep cuts about being a weird p-file sex terrorist. He again cited the British media to blame for his downfall, saying they are the worst enemy in the world, and had paid underage girls at a bar to arrange a photo scoop. Oh, classic. <laughs> classic sting. <laughs> the old minor photo scoop. Uh, yeah, that's been used quite a bit. I'm sure News of the World really had to collect a bunch of teenagers to do a photo scoop on you, Glitter. Jeez. An aged, waning relevancy glam artist was the target of a photo scoop. Good God. Fucking in La La Land in this man's head. Of course, Glitter refused to comment on his prior charge regarding his collection of CP. In June 2006, Glitter had appealed for a reduced sentence to the Supreme Court of Vietnam, but was rejected four weeks later. Although he retained his composure during the hearing upon leaving the courthouse, Glitter shouted at the media presence about the failings of the Vietnamese justice system. In February 2007, Glitter's sentence was reduced by three months. Following this announcement, the Philippines government barred Glitter from entry in anticipation of his impending release. Glitter was released in 2008, serving his sentence, and was escorted under police guard to Tan Son Nat International Airport in Ho Chi Minh, and put on a flight to London via Bangkok. When he landed in Bangkok, Glitter alleged that he had severe heart condition that was being aggravated, refusing to board the plane and requesting medical aid. A doctor diagnosed Glitter with chest wall pain syndrome, prescribing him anti-inflammatories and deeming him fit for travel. Fuck you, Gary. Glitter continued to refuse to board the flight, exclaiming that he was a free man and booked himself into a transit lounge in hopes of avoiding extradition. Glitter was barred entry into Thailand as he was considered a domestic threat. Thai immigration officials gave him timeline to leave voluntarily or he would be extradited extradited to the UK with extreme prejudice. On the evening of August 20th, 2007, Glitter took a flight to Hong Kong, where he requested medical treatment. The Hong Kong authorities also refused to admit him, fuck you Gary, and he returned to Thailand the next day. 19 countries, including Cuba, Cambodia, and the Philippines announced that they would refuse entry to Glitter, and on August 21st, the Thai authorities stated that he had agreed to return to the UK, fuck you Gary. Glitter arrived at the Heathrow Airport on the morning of August 22, 2008, where he was met by London police. Following his return to the UK, he was placed on the Sex Offenders Registry for life, and although he attempted to appeal this decision, he eventually abandoned his efforts. The Daily Telegraph reported that Glitter planned to record a new album, oh boy, after his prison release. He was quoted saying, I have an incomplete album I want to finish. I've been thinking about the plan during my days in jail. I've sung rock and roll for 40 years. After jail, I will continue rock and roll. Great. Real great, Gary. Real glad that the takeaway here is, <laughs> is to keep recording music. You know, that's that's one of the most oblivious things about these, these shambling bones, these faded rock stars, is that they can't get give up the ghost even if they're a fucking nonce. Glitter had colluded with fellow British sex offender and media personality Jimmy Savile to assault a then 13 year old girl in Savile's BBC dressing room. On October 28, 2012, Glitter was arrested once again by British authorities and questioned as a part of Operation Yew Tree, a British police investigation into incidents of sexual abuse against children by Jimmy Savile. Glitter was released on police bail until the middle of December and was bailed again until February. On the 5th of June, 2014, Glitter was charged with eight counts of sexual offenses committed against two girls aged between 12 and 14, between 1977 and 1980. On January 19th, 2015, Glitter appeared at Southwark Crown Court, accused of seven counts 
of indecent assault, one count of attempted great, and two other S offenses against three girls between 1975 and 1980. He was accused of SAing two girls aged 12 and 13 after inviting them backstage to his dressing room and attempting to rape a girl under the age of 10 after having crept into her bed. This guy is a complete fucking creep. This is why I'm making this video. On February 5th, 2015, Glitter was convicted of attempted rape, four counts of indecent assault, and one of having S intercourse with a girl under the age of 13. He was acquitted of the three other counts. He was remanded in custody at HM Prison Wandsworth prior to his sentence. On February 27th, 2015, Judge Alistair McCreeth sentenced Glitter to 16 years in prison. In May of 2015, Glitter attempted to appeal this decision. The appeal was denied by the Court of Appeal, ruling that there was nothing unsafe regarding this conviction. Following this ruling, it was announced by the BBC that Glitter's past performances on top of the pops would no longer be shown. Glitter, now 72, would be incarcerated until March of 2023, released, and then quickly imprisoned again for, well, guess what? Violating his probation terms and using a smartphone to attempt to access the dark web. Yeah, you can't teach an old nonce new tricks. Glitter's talent as a performer and a musician cannot be denied, but catchy songs don't absolve you of horrific wrongdoing like what I've outlined here. No toe-tapping melody, no hummable section, no karaoke-worthy lyricism is worth the suffering this despicable man has caused scores of children in his wake. The fact that this man's work is still used as a rallying cry for athletes or in movies like Joker is despicable and should be treated as such. Just stop playing the sickos music. Gary said it best in words all too prophetic. This was the story of a rock star that became a monster.